Forge from Iron is proud to support Iron Supporting Food Banks. They are a group of West Ham United fans and friends inspired by the work of other football fan food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations from Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supply seven distribution centres in the borough, seven days a week, and hand out several hundred three-day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham community. They are supported in their efforts by West Ham United Football Club, the WHU Foundation, LS185, London Legacy Development Corporation, Newham Council, the Met Police, Spire London East Hospital, Expedient Security and a large number of West Ham and football fans. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page. You will find the link to this in the description section of the video details in this stream. Thank you for your support. Come on you irons. Welcome along to Falls from Iron, ladies and gentlemen, and we'd like to wish you a, a happy new year. Please don't forget to like, comment on, and share this stream to your social media platform. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for alerts on new content. As always, we thank you very much indeed for your support. We are here to discuss the matter that took place at London Stadium yesterday yeah. evening. Match day 17 of 38 in the Premier League, which finished West Ham United I've put that wrong there, haven't I? That's wishful thinking on my behalf. That shows you I was rushing. I'm going to have to correct that. I've just realised I put it down as West Ham 2, Brentford nil. No, it was the other way round, ladies and gentlemen. You didn't dream it. You didn't dream it. And by the wonders of technology, I can edit this bit out. Stuff it. Um, it was actually West Ham United nil, Brentford 2. <laughs> If it if it was two nil to West Ham, we wouldn't be looking so so sort of cheesed off and and uh, thoroughly unimpressed with with matters that took place yesterday. Duke, um, is it would it really be a stupid question if I sort of said, uh, how, "How are you feeling this morning, mate?" They're coming to take you away. Oh, oh ha, ha, he, he, ha, ha. yeah, some men in white coats because I, I still support this football club. Like, oh, no, mental in it. Well, anyway, right. <clears throat> okay, let's 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 do <clears throat> let's do the game mm -hmm. as as an individual, and then we'll cover what I need to cover um, as we go. Listen, we saw the three five two come out. Um, sorry, let me rephrase that. What I thought was going to be a three five two come out. It was a four twelve six. So uh, there was there, there, it was anything but. It was a five four one, mate. Whatever that formation he lined up, it wasn't even that, mate. It was actually, it was actually a four. It was a four two. Hey, Hamid. Four two. Two two. two here, Craven. Yeah, two here, one yep. there, two here, and it was. No idea, I mean, Hammer. I, I I sat down and figured it out, Rob. Do you want to do you want to hear? Do you want to hear something scary? Go for it. Emerson twenty eight. Soufal thirty. Soufal thirty. Ogbonna thirty four. Cresswell thirty three, and Dawson thirty two. The yeah. combined age of our back five, if you would, last night was a hundred and fifty seven. Years old. <laughs> right. Now, I want to cover the first goal. 
Now, oh, I've, I've seen Must a lot. You. So, come to a long throw. And I sat here and laughed, Rob. I laughed at our ineptness, uh, our, our, our lack of organisation, our inability to defend. Yep. A simple, long throw. When you consider from set pieces 18 months ago, we would have one of the most dangerous teams, if not the most dangerous team in the Premier League, possibly no even idea, Europe from yep. set plays, right? Yeah. So we should be able to deal with long throws and corners, considering that at the other end, we are we were absolutely outstanding, right? You'd like to think so. So this long ball comes over, there's some absolute bullshit that goes on. And it's a really, it's a good save from Fabianski. Now, my concern is that Fabla has not learned from the game last season against Brentford at the London Stadium about palming the ball back into the middle of the fucking box when he makes a save. Yeah. Right? We lost the game last year in the 91st minute because he did exactly the same thing as he fucking did last night. Yep. Right? I've seen stuff on Facebook and Twitter where, oh, if that's Ariola, he palms it to the left, it goes away. Shut up. You can't tell me that that's going to happen without a doubt. There's a possibility, yes, but you can't tell me it's a definite. So I'm not going to buy into that and I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to beat Fab with a fucking stick that he's carved for himself. Mm -hmm. Right? He no longer is a Premier League quality goalkeeper. I'm sorry. Um, he dithers. He delays. Um, I mean, he nearly... Fought, his manager. He nearly tripped himself up last night trying to work out whether he should release the ball early or whether he should hold on to it a bit longer. He's, yeah. His feet stopped working. I'm not quite sure what was, what's going on. Right? The you and me both. That, the fact that, you know... Even even on so the first ball we dealt with, the second ball we didn't, the third ball ended up in the box. The save from the keeper then creates the fourth ball, and we're still second best to that, which lets um, Ivan Tony stick out a big toe. And um, I, I reckon he had a bet on himself to score last night. Probably. Um, Did you see his celebration as well? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fuck off. Um, Taking the piss, wasn't he? Now. Don't get me wrong, I'd love him, but that's neither in or there right now. Um, it's it's bullshit, Rob, as far as I'm concerned. I go back to the 157 years of age. I don't know, Stephen. Right? I don't know. Can't work um, it out. You know, 157 years of age, uh, taking into the context, there's some significant experience in there and they cannot deal. Yeah. It's not good enough. It is not good enough. And from that moment on, it was an uphill battle. Mm. It was an uphill struggle. We we didn't even look at times to get back into the game. Um, at, I don't think we um, could. They look well, no. they look beaten from the moment to me where I was sat, Duke. From where I was sat. We looked like we had a lot of the fight knocked out of us when that first goal hit the back of the net. In the first twenty minutes, mate, we looked good. We we did. I mean, I, I say we looked good. We well, still we look fucking clueless. Post. But we still look clueless, and and there's the problem. No, we were too no busy, cutting edge. Too busy fucking around on the wings between Emerson, um, Ben Rama. And Cresswell all trying to shoehorn into the same six inches of grass space that they were trying to play in and still couldn't get a fucking decent cross into the box. Um, the fact that Skamaka looked completely uninterested in that first half, and I don't blame him because he's making the runs <coughs> initially when we get the ball yeah. out wide. And I spent a bit of time watching him last night on, on the um, stream in the south of France. I spent a bit of time watching him last night. Yep. And he was making the, the the near post across the defender runs, um, ready for the ball to come in, not early, but 
when he's making those runs. He's making those runs and he's expecting that ball to be there. Well, it never came. Yeah. He made, on, I'll, I'll tell you what, just before the Declan Rice, um, uh, the, the post, yeah? Hmm. He made the same run three times. Three times he made the same run. One for Ben Rama to make the cross. Yep. The second one for Emerson to make the cross. And the third one for Declan Rice to put the ball in the box on the in the same position where he actually ended up shooting from um in the uh you know the one that hit the post, right? So there we are. So that's what we've got. He made the same runs three times. If that ball goes into the box, I actually suspect he actually gets on the end of it, Rob. I actually suspect we we might have actually done some damage um, yeah. at that point. Now, in Skamaka's defence, if he's going to keep making the same movement, he's he's wanting to attack the ball when it comes into the box. He's ready to attack the ball when it comes into the box. I've seen a lot of um, a lot of posts comparing him and Haller. Um, Haller yes. never made them. Haller never made them runs, Rob. Right? right, because that that just wasn't his bread and butter. He never made those those runs. Right, Skamaka was making those runs yesterday, all through the first half. Even when the ball was out on the right with Suchek, he, uh, with Sufal, he was yeah. running across the front of his defender trying to get. You know, in and around the penalty spot, you know, that, that kind of space between the penalty spot and the near post on both sides. Hmm. And nothing came. Nothing came. So why keep fucking bothering? And I don't blame him, Rob. This is the thing. I don't blame Skamaka. If I'm, that's, that's why he ends up with the, the two shots at the very end of the game, because he's thinking, fuck this. I'm not doing anything else otherwise. Hmm. Um I'm not going to bother if I'm in his shoes. Fuck it. Why should I keep? Why should I keep doing it when it ain't coming? When you're delaying, and when they did get the crossing, it's just a namby pamby. Oh, let's float one into the box. Which yeah, you've then got to do all the work to generate power, guidance. Whereas get the ball whipped in, bang, he gets near post. I guarantee you, it tests the keeper. Right? If it doesn't, then we have another conversation on another day. You know, whatever. I don't care. But the fact that he he looked disinterested, yeah, is coming from the way that these players are set up. I don't care. Listen, people can come at me all they want, right? I, I don't care. And I, and I and if you've got a if you've got a decent argument, I'm willing to entertain and have a conversation with you. But if you keep coming at me with the same tosh then I'm not even going to bother entertaining you. Now, we're clueless. We are absolutely clueless. He's clueless. Mm -hmm. How many times did the camera pan to him last night and you see this, Rob, on the touchline? I've seen very limited of the TV footage. I, the only TV Is footage, because I was there last night, the only TV footage I saw, I saw his, his post-match interview. Wanker. And I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what I saw. Sorry. I, I saw a, a man that was defeated. I saw yes. a man that, that had had... But he's not wrong because he's still got a job. He's still in fucking... Oh, I know. I know. He ain't defeated, is he? No, but what I'm saying is is that he, he didn't have... If he'd have come out and he'd have been quite bullish and sort of like saying, you know, listen, we're, we're fighting, we're this, we're that. But he just seemed really sort of... Yeah, well, you know, I thought that we were the better team in the first half and blah, blah. Same old bollocks. Well, between him bollocks. and Deck, you've got Deck there with his head down. You've got him standing there with his arms crossed. And I'm thinking, we are devoid of ideas. I think you I think you've said leader. it. Leader. No. We haven't got a leader. Well, there's that. My brother said it. My brother said it best. And I think I, re I, I forwarded his message into our chat. We look like we hadn't been coached this week. We look like we haven't been on the training pitch. We we look like look like we've been on the pitch. You guys go just go out and do, lads. Like I don't care. Um, there was no, um, there was no ideas. You know, Declan Rice is there going. You know, we've got to keep trying to find 
a way that works. So we've got to keep, you know, we've got to keep going on. I mean, I watched his interview this morning um, on the West Ham website. Yeah. And and the questions were all fucking spoon fed. Yeah, but if, it's on the, if it's on the official on the club website, website. It will that's be, what I mean. It? There's no challenge to him. There's no challenge to him. No, we, you know, we felt that we played well. Well, quite clearly, you fucking did him. We lost two 0 you prick. Mm. We had twenty shots, only five of which were on target, and I do believe two of them come from Craig fucking Dawson. Yes, yes. Right now, he was probably our most potent attacking force. I cannot, I cannot. I cannot justify last night that although for the first 15, 20 minutes, Rob, hmm. um, it, it, there, there was nothing. Now, we were devoid of ideas. We were yep. inept going forward. Not even sure we were that good. And I, and I re- there's, there's two players in our, in our 11 that I really really feel sorry for right now. And yep. one of them is Jean-Luc Scamacca. Yes. Because he's being, he's being beaten with a hell air stick, despite the fact that for the first 20 minutes of the game yesterday, I saw him try. I saw him want, and we never gave him anything. And the other one, who I think... is kind of bringing on the own... His criticism that he's getting... I think he's a better player than he's actually been. Yeah. And I think he will be a better player under a different manager. Hmm. Someone who understands the attacking nuances of a player from Brazil. Yeah. A Samba Flair player. Um and that is um Lucas Paqueta. Right. I yes, he was very wasteful last night. Yes, he was the reason that we went 2 0 down because the ball that he kind of volleyed between um, uh, uh, Benny and Emerson, yep. kind of, you know, what, what are we doing? Uh, uh, what, what's going on here? Goes out of play. But it's not him I blame for that goal, Rob. Um, and I'll come to that in a minute. Um, yes, he was wasteful. I mean, we all, we all ripped apart um, the other... Uh, um, we ripped, we ripped apart, oh, fuck it, I can't remember now, Skamaka. And we're ripping apart Paqueta. And, and rightly so, we ripped apart Suchek for his for his eight completed passes the other night out of about his packet. No, it ain't sharp, woman. Um, we, we, it's hard to say we've got to get behind the side. We, we, we are behind our team, we're just not behind our manager when... He's absolutely clueless and and devoid. I'm not going to call him a dinosaur. I'm not going to be kind of rude on that front, but he's clueless right now. He's he doesn't know how to get the best out of the players we got. He's lost the dressing room. That's Looks clear that to see. I do believe I and I really do believe this. Before I move on to the second goal, that Rice and his attitude have caused a rift in that in that dressing room, and I and I really do think so. Um, I mean, listen, the second goal, if we... Chris will. <laughs> if we wasn't sure, if we wasn't sure that we needed a new left back after the two red cards in Europe last year, we're never going to realise we need a new left back. No. Um, we went out and bought the fourth choice Chelsea sent a left back, who was clearly not good enough for Chelsea, and that's why he was the fourth choice at Chelsea. Um, I haven't seen enough of him to make a judgment call yet. Yeah. But now, we already had Lanzini. We already had Fornells. We already had Ben Rama. We didn't need Paqueta in the grand scheme of things. I would have rather have seen him, seen him gone spent 30 million on a new left back under the age of 20, 26. Hmm. 30 million on a new right back. There's, there's just 60 million that essentially is spent on Paqueta. Um, I. That's what I would have done, me personally. He had a four, possibly five yard head start on 
De Silva. De Silva, yeah. Before the goal. And De Silva put his hands on his shoulder. He folded that cheap suit, didn't he? What it was. I tell you, I tell you, well, I'll tell you what it was like. It was like me walking around London and saying, excuse me to someone as I'm trying to get on a train and they move to the side and let me on and they miss their train. That's what that was like yesterday. He basically, the geezer touched his arm. He went, excuse me. And Chris well went, sorry, Josh, go on. Go. Hmm. And listen, we... We look lost. We look there's um, deharmonized, if you will. We we don't look like there's any harmony within this. Um, no, within this squad, I do believe that. I don't think there's was. any fight. That's the thing, Duke. That's well, the thing that worries me. We, they, there's no there's no there's no fight in that team. Well, you know, Bonzo, who, Bonzo where Bonzo where yesterday that. was some it needed someone to do a little bit of a sort of like. A crunchy challenge, do you know what I mean? To get the crowd up, mate. Seriously, I don't know whether this came across on 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 the TV footage. It was like being in a fucking morgue. Yeah, it did. Yeah, the atmosphere was non-existent. Do you, do you know I think the it's because everybody there knew. Work. Everybody knew that it was just it, that nothing was going to fucking happen. The loudest that stadium was, Rob, was when two whistles blew. One of which was half time and one of which was full time. And I reckon with the people that were left in the stadium at full time, they made more noise than we did at half time. <clears throat> um, I'm. We look, look, we look clueless. We look lost. We look. Um, we look shit. Um, like I say, I think I think the fact that this whole Cresswell scenario where he's come back. From the Euros, you know, I've I, I've called it the Declan Rice experiment, as as everyone that has watched the channels know. Um, I think that's caused some um, oh. discontent within the camp. I really do. The fact that you know we've we've offered him, you know, close to two hundred and fifty grand a week over an eight year contract um, to stay. <laughs> um, the fact that he's come to, back and gone, so. I want to be the main man. Um, you will do as essentially it comes across as this is what I want. If you don't give it to me, I want to go. Oh, Off yes, Mr. Rice, right. let's give it to you, Leslie. You can have it. Thank you. Um, and it's fucking ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, he needs to shelve his ego before the, before the Leeds game. Or after the league game, he can fuck off. And I will quite happily take £90 million for him. And I would quite happily reinvest that £90 million on a new left back, a new right back. There's talk today. I, but but just to be clear, Keane, would, this, would this be uh, with Moyes in charge or with someone no, else? No, 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 no. I'd fuck him off as well. They can yeah. both go together. Um, cool. But I, I would. I'd bring in a new manager. I'd... I'd Cash in, no disrespect, I cash in on, on deck now. His head's gone, he's not interested. Um, <clears throat> and I'll I, 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 I tell you what, I don't know whether you saw this on the TV footage, I don't know, but I'll be fair to deck. The one thing that when both those goals hit straight away, he's he's like, Come on, boys, come on, you know, he, he's try. he is trying, but I just don't think that he's. When when the going really gets tough and uh, sort of like you need to roll your sleeves up, with all due respect to Declan Rice, is I, I'm not quite sure that that's in his DNA. I d he li listen, he's a he's a far better technical player, all round player than than Mark Noble ever was. With all due respect to Mark Noble, who I love dearly, but Mark but, Noble, but, but Mark Noble, spirit. yeah, Mark Noble was someone that could when when shit hit fan. He could dust himself down. And like I say, he had that ability. Bang. Put in a challenge on an opposition player. And even if he got a yellow card, crowd would be up. it would get a reaction. Come on, boys. Come on. Fucking there's the, there's the crowd. They're behind us. Come on. Let's fucking do it for them. I didn't see any of that last night. Well, but he was But that's it. See. Our last relegation battle, if I remember rightly, when we stayed up. Scott, what, Parker. One of the boys. Oh, Scott, 
Parker. Scott Parker. I'm going to go with that one, like the one that was really scary. I remember being behind at Wigan. Against no, that was at uh, bowling. No, it's what I mean. it was against Wigan, wasn't it? Against Wigan. Behind like, against uh, Wigan. Uh, and Scott Parker went, fuck it, come on, we're going, we're going. And he grabbed them and he and he carried us. He carried yep. us, right? Yep. He gave the he was the one that gave the um he was the one that gave the team talk at half time, if I remember rightly. And Again, no nonsense. Captain, drag you out of the bullshit. We're going to fucking do this. I'll do it myself if I have to. Mm -hmm. Julian Dix, smashing players around the pitch, stamping on John Spencer's head, right? What do you see from Deck apart from <laughs> hands in the air and... <laughs> nothing. It does get a little bit like that, doesn't it? It's, I'll tell you what, petulant child, Rob, right? He doesn't, doesn't defend his team i.e. with a referee and goes to have conversations with a referee, he'd rather just stand there, shake his head and look at the fucking floor. Fuck mm. off. If you are not going to do what a, a captain's job, then go. Because Stephen's got I, a question for you, Duke. Where is he? Go on. Who would be your choice of manager if, if they pulled a the trigger on Moyes? Honestly? Well, let, let, me, let me slightly re, rejig the question, if I may, Stephen. Who would be your choice of manager realistically? Yeah, no, that's fine. I can Bearing in mind that, I've that taken Gold, a look. Gold and Sullivan generally don't poach managers that are already incumbents no? at other clubs. Is that, they is that a work? For, yeah. Tedesco. Sell him to me. I'll tell you what, mate. He, I, I, I was having a look. I've, I've been looking at some highlights and stuff on YouTube of the way he plays, right? Hmm. It's forward thinking. It's innovative. He's okay. he's only I think he's thirty seven. And for those of you who don't know who he is, do yourself a favour. Go over onto um, uh, the young lad that works with Gio and Gonzo over on oh, um, Hammers Chat. Euro Hammer expert. He's under oh. Euro expert on. Um, he's under Euro expert on Twitter. He put yep. a he put a video out. It's a two minute thirteen long, two minute thirteen second long video that he put out fifteen, well, probably about eighteen, seventeen, eighteen hours ago now, and it says, "Well, West Ham fans, the time may be coming sooner rather than later for David Moyes to step aside. Thank you, if you. you're Moyes out, then there's only one man you can realistically ask for, and his name is Domenico Tedesco, and he does a two, just under two and or two minutes." 13 seconds it's already had forty-five thousand views right this video he's 37 years old this manager again forward thinking he's um he, he was at leipzig um I've, I've watched some of the highlights um i mentioned Do you know how his english is right now i don't care as long as he can talk football okay. that's where i'm at um, I've been I've been keeping an eye on a close I've been keeping a close eye on um on, on one of my favourite players, uh, favourite West Ham players, um, doing a bang up job mm. at Middlesbrough. They got another win the other night too. Yes. Forward thinking, young, innovative manager. Right. I'm not saying. Give me Michael Carrick. That's not what I'm saying. He's cutting his teeth at Middlesbrough. Give him 18 months. Um, would I be interested in taking him at the end of next season if the opportunity arose? Yes, I would. But right now, for me, Tedesco, um, his style of play, um, he, he he uses youngsters, Rob. It's part of the Red Bull model. Yeah. Um, I mean, Leipzig. Um, Happy New Year, Neil. Was it Canate? Um, yes. Canate was a, was a Leipzig player. Um, yes. my, my, my favorite young lad in the German league at the moment, Kareem Emi, he, he's, he was part of the Red Bull model, but he was at Salzburg, Kareem Emi. Yep. Um, Leipzig also had, um, Erling Haaland. Yep. Before he went to Dortmund, he came from Salzburg to Leipzig to Dortmund. That's the way they tend to go. They go Salzburg, Leipzig, Dortmund. Yeah, because of the because of the Red Bull, it's the Red Bull model, um, and that's what he's used to. The Red Bull model. Uh, well, David Red Bull didn't buy us, Rob. That. that was that was the problem. Red Bull didn't come in. 
No, no, no. Um, but he he looked at oh Red yeah, no, Bull he looked as the blueprint. Yet, yet we had a, a, a back line that, con, that consisted pretty much exclusively of, of people the wrong side of thirty. Yeah, hundred and fifty-seven you know, years quicker. old. Hundred and fifty-seven years old. Our back combined age was yesterday. Um, so for me. Yeah, like I say, get yourself over on the Euro Expert on on Twitter. Have a little look at the video. He explains it. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back and watch it again once I'm done here. Um, you did indeed happy. You had COVID, didn't you? If I remember rightly, and you spent it with Lanzini and Noble. I know. Um, I mean, listen, we're we're struggling, Rob. We're struggling. Um, Confidence is shot to shit. There's quite clearly an issue within the um, within the camp. Um, I, I do believe um, there's an issue with Rice somewhere down the line. I know that Mark Noble comes in in a couple of days' time, but as far as I'm concerned, and, and this might be controversial, and I think it will be controversial, but he is, um, but he's now a yes man. I know he's employed by the club. What else? What else can he do? But that's that's my that's my take on it, Rob. Even though he was still employed by the club when he was a player, he you know that's just the way it was. Now he's directly employed by those prats, of, you know, that own the club and uh, old fucking slap bucket um, allegedly. Um, we, we're not going to get much out of him, as far as I'm concerned. It's all going to be corporate spill from now on. And I really don't want that from Mark Noble, so I'm probably not going to listen now. I know that sounds a bit rough and a bit harsh, but I'm not going to listen to him now because he's just going to spout the bullshit that they want him to spout. There's going to be can't nothing. do anything else. He, 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 you know, no, he, and that's what I mean. I'm not going to blame him for it, but it doesn't mean I have to listen. Yeah, 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 I get that. You know, so... I mean, listen, with. We're what, what are we? What's the time? Uh, we're ten and a half hours away from the year 2023. And I do believe we've spent near enough the entirety of 2022 talking about David Moyes, his lack of ideas. I mean, we've picked up 19 points out of 72 possible league points in the entirety of 2022. I mean, I have no idea what's going on. We can only assume, we can only put forward our our ideas. I, like I say, I do believe he's lost the dressing room. I do believe that Declan Rice has caused some sort of rift with his attitude and his behaviour of, you know, me, me, me. I really do believe that. Um, the fact that the board have already come out and said he's safe, he ain't going nowhere. Jacob Steinberg, yeah, that's great, isn't it? Jacob Steinberg has, has already come out and put that out on on Twitter this morning. Um, I do have a picture, Rob, that I would actually let me upload it a minute. If you can take over, mm -hmm. I want to share this picture that was sent to me uh, today, if I may. Yeah. I mean, as far as yesterday was concerned, this is this is my experience. So I'm, I was I was quite pessimistic, and I, I I like to try and be optimistic. Usually, that's usually my default setting. But the way things have been of late, that's that's kind of altered my perception on things with with West Ham and David Moyes. And I turned around, and I was I was there with with one of my sons, my daughter, and one of my daughter's friends. And as we were we were going from Hackney Wick, we'd been to see the Rib Man. And I'm waiting for the, the One Football app, which you can find in the description section below, for the for the team lineups an hour before. I was expecting, and I, I know we said this in the match preview, I wasn't expecting anything different from the Arsenal game. Well, I was shocked. I was I was really shocked because obviously he'd made the change that he'd finally dropped Thomas Sojek. Months too late, but he's finally done it. So I again playing devil's advocate. We'd all been clamouring for Thomas Sochet to get dropped. He dropped him. Fine. We'd all been clamouring for change something, Davey. Change formation. Do this, do that. He did it. 
So again, I got, I got to give him a little bit of credit for that. But I think it's possibly too little, too late because I think by the time he's finally done it, I think the damage to the confidence has been done, and I'm not too sure that he can undo it because he's the one that's largely caused the problem, in my view. Now, so obviously you go through the starting lineup and you go, oh, he's brought Emerson in. We're playing, we're playing. Uh, well, Pete, it was put down as a three-four-two-one formation on the One Football app. Now, no, I didn't no, buy no. it for a second. I didn't buy it for a second. I went, well, that's possibly a five-three-two, maybe even a five-four-one yeah. at home to Brentford. I'm like, is this what we've been reduced to? But then I'm sort of like, well, okay, look, let, let's see how it goes. It might be a masterstroke. It could be that there's some sort of tactical master plan that David Moyes has conjured up. In the last couple of days, he's had his scouts out watching Brentford diligently. Maybe he knows something we don't. Maybe I need to give this time. And as you said, for the first 15 minutes or so of the match, you know, Deck hit a shot. It grazed the outside of the post. We had the corner. Dawson comes steaming through just past David Raya's upright. And you're thinking, OK, well, it's, it's a bright start. But fundamentally, we're still nil-nil. We need to we need to put the ball in the back of the net. We need to get this crowd up. Because even then, I've got to be honest, I'm sitting there and it's like, it's fucking quiet tonight, isn't it? Anyway, they obviously score. And I'm like, oh, dear. And, and at no point from that point on did we, in my opinion, really look like. I mean, the only, correct me if I'm wrong, the only save that I can really remember David Raya making from that point on, from the point that we was 2-0 down, was a, in the second half, a header from, I believe it was Craig Dawson, that Raya tipped over. I can't remember any other saves that really he had to make. And when I say save... I'm laying on the ball. Saves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prick. Yeah. But that was that was my perspective on things, mate. I mean, as I say, and and... and at the full time whistle, and as I say, it was it, the the atmosphere from the West Ham section was was very very quiet from from the first whistle and went down when they scored the goal. It went down when they scored the second goal, and Cresswell got outpaced like he had lead boots on. Um, the people that actually bothered to stay to the final whistle, of which I was one, but there wasn't many in, in of the West Ham persuasion. Brentford had, had stayed to the, to the end, and why wouldn't they? Credit to them, but the people that stayed, there was a there was a bit of booing going on. But I I got to be honest with you, and I said it. I think I said it in the in the preview. I was worried about whether if it went really bad, and I don't think it it was a million miles away from that yesterday. I actually thought that it could be the what happened in the Burnley game when we went three 0 down and it was all going mental below the director's box. People couldn't be fucking bothered. So that's what I was really about to say, be well, asked. That's exactly what I was about to mention. People, people have lost interest. People don't care. People are. We're, we're at a point now where it's like, oh well, it's happened. We're not being. We're not being listened to. Okay. Yeah, I do. I do believe a new manager can come in and turn it around. I do believe a new manager can come in and unite this team again. Um, I wanted, as I said, I, I was looking for something, Rob. When I, I was yes, looking mate. for a little, I was looking for a little video, uh, no, oh, a little hello. picture. No, not one of them. No, it was a picture. Okay. And I found it. And I'm going to put it up. Uh, I'd also like to point out 100, 194 years old, if you include Fabianski, is the age combined of our back line, including keeper. <laughs> Nearly 200 years old. A goalkeeper and five defenders. Hmm. 100 and geez, Christ, 194 years old. It's embarrassing, and he, played, Robin, and he played that against their front line of very, very mobile, very, very quick. Yep. Brilliant, isn't it? Embarrassing. Right, this is the this is the picture I found. So let's take a look at this. Let me just get rid of get rid of the comment. Hang on. No. I'm trying to get rid of the bloody um Watford game. Uh Wolves game. Because I've got that up on my screen as well, and I keep ballsing up and moving it in the wrong place. Um, so that there is um, graphic that shows you 
the threats created through successful in-play passes and carries. So on the way I'm looking at it, where Kevin De Bruyne is the main one, his mm-hmm. players towards this side of the grid create significant threat through playing passes. Okay, And on the other side of the grid, where Mitoma is, um, players on this side of the graph uh, on this side create significant threat, uh, threats through ball carries, right? Mm. So take a look at that and tell me where in that list is a West Ham player, Rob. There is not. I, well, I can't really West make Ham. out what's on there, mate, to be honest with you. There is not one West Ham name really? on that screen. So you've got Kevin De Bruyne, who um, creates uh, 0.46 chances per game with a significant, well, who creates 0.46 significant threats per game. So Mm. basically, yeah, um, players with over 450 minutes played are included. Shaded region represents players in the 20th to 80th percentile in either metric. Right. Right. So you look there, you've got Trent. Yeah, you've got Andy Robertson. You've got James Milner. All in that one bunch, right? All three right. of them are are in there. You've got Kieran Trippier. On the other side, you've got Kulusevski, Grealish, Traore, Sterling, Sancho, Harvey Barnes, Pulisic. There's not one West Ham player in there that's created a significant threat from, from a pass or a ball carry this season. Not one. Brilliant. So what does it Fantastic. tell you? What I think it what, tells you we're fucked. Well, it tells me that we're doing nothing on the pitch. Now, is that because of the way we're set up? I yes, think he so. changed. Listen, he changed the formation last night, Rob. Yeah, he changed. Sorry, let me rephrase that. He changed the formation last night, Rob. Allegedly, okay. He changed personnel yesterday. But what was the one thing I said? In the pre-match preview, it didn't matter if he changed formation. Doesn't matter if he changes personnel. If he he still sets up with the same game plan and the same tactics, it doesn't matter. And once again, last night, I'm watching when we lost possession of the ball, where were we? Our own half, we had 11 men behind the ball. When we lost possession, Antonio was standing on the... Uh, Skamaka was standing on the fucking centre spot. Declan Rice was literally standing in the back five at one point when we when we lost possession. Right? It didn't matter. Exactly what I said was going to happen, happened. He set us up. Exactly the same tactical play, the same in-game management as he does in any other formation. It doesn't matter what formation we play. It doesn't matter what for, what personnel is in that lineup. If he says when we lose the ball, you retreat to the halfway line. What's the point? What's the point? You you could play a you could play a a three three four formation. Okay, three defenders, three midfielders. And four attackers on that pitch. But if he says to you, when we don't have possession, everyone back behind the ball, everyone in our half, the second we lose possession, don't even try and win the ball back. If you watch, we'll go back and watch the highlights, Rob, on at least six occasions, I think, are counted. Every time we lost the ball fairly high up the pitch, we didn't even try and win it back high up the pitch. We started to retreat to the halfway line to let them have the ball. Mm. What's the fucking point? Unless you're going to change your gameplay, <clears throat> your in-game management and your in-game tactics, changing formation and personnel don't mean jack. Does not mean jack. And he did exactly that yesterday, Rob. He did exactly that. Oh, by the way, um, not that one. That one. You got a new photograph at it's last. It's a bit blurry, but it was taken by a customer at half past six one morning in the rain. And they sent it to me. I think it's quite a nice little picture. Okay. Just, um, at least it's not got the dead flowers out the front. It's just a little bit blurry. 
I've got a new one coming anyway. Um, so to sum up, Rob, clueless, out of ideas, he changed formation, he didn't change tactics, changed personnel, he didn't change tactics. As I say, we retreated to the halfway line, say ninety percent of the time we lost the ball. So what's what's the point? Mm. What's the point? He's for me, he's done. It's, it's over for him. There is no this he could win the next six. And I don't think I'm going to change my opinion of David Moyes that he's been found out and it's done. It's, it's done. the style of football, I think. I think that it just it sucked the life out of first of all, a bunch of players who I think at the beginning of the season everybody oh. looked at what... Ruben Neves. What a save by David De Gea. Sorry, Rob. Free kick, top bins. How he's got his hands to that is beyond me. What a save. Carry on. Sorry. I thought I was about to celebrate then. I was hoping, man, you would lose this game. But then, problem is, man, no, you this game gives we don't, the and that. Yeah, we don't want that. We want Man United to absolutely smash them to pieces, don't we? And this is what we've been reduced to, ladies and gentlemen. A team that has finished sixth and seventh in the last two complete yep. Premier League seasons. A team that a few months ago had made it to a European semi-final. And we yeah. are reduced to cheering for Manchester United to beat Wolverhampton Wanderers. That's how far we've sunk. And this is a team that spent roughly £180 million on players in the summer. How uh, there's there's I don't think there's any other club that could fuck things up so badly, so quickly as what we seem to have managed. Welcome to West Ham. Uh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. No, uh, listen, if there if you'd have said to me before the season began, you know, do you think we still have the ability to to fuck things up? I'd go, oh, listen, that that's that's within us. That that part of our DNA will never ever leave us. But Frank's my quite arc, sure it was going to happen. Turned the corner, Rob. Say again. I, I thought we turned the corner, and the last. I think two we went games, left instead of right, though. <laughs> well, I wouldn't care. To be honest with you, problem is that you say we turned left. Yeah, the fact that we've turned left, we've kind of gone down a, a, a crescent. You know, uh, we've gone down a Cold crescent. Snack. Oh no, we've gone down a crescent, but it's gone backwards. So we're all the way back now where we started and we've got to climb that ladder again. It's, it's, it's basically a game of snakes and ladders, isn't it? Um, we've, we've, we have we've had progressed. We had progressed, but then we took the wrong turn. And I, I personally think the wrong turn Ooh. was... Happy birthday, yeah. Stephen. Happy birthday, Steve. And uh, Stephen, Stephen, why don't you... Um... Why don't you give your 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 West Ham nostalgia page a plug um, on? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what I'll do for you, mate. I'll I'll, I'll have a look. Um, if you can t chat on for a bit, Stephen's got a, a little page that he runs on, yeah, Facebook, no. which I mean, uh, is very I'm, good. I mean, listen, we we have habit, don't we? Right? I know. I know. There's some haters, and and they're not haters. It's that's the wrong word. Um, there are some Vlasic uh, non fans out there, shall I say, and. I think the sad part of it, Rob, is that, you know, he's been made a scapegoat from being played in the wrong position. Um, Skamak has oh, not been go. played to his... If any of you guys century. are on Facebook... Go there. Have a, have, a, have a little look there. It's it's a very good page. It's called West Ham United's Nostalgia Play page. Stephen's posting on it every five minutes it seems um but it's really good stuff if any of you guys sort of like are of a certain age and you like a little trip down memory lane and and to reminisce about times when we were less shit than we are at the minute in the main right. then again, even, we even had times back then when we were shit but it was obviously pre-premier league so relegation didn't cost you 150 180 million pounds yeah um, uh, even then mate like i say they're taking the um they're taking away parachute payments, and that's a scary... Yeah, that's the first I've heard of that. What's that all about? Thought. Well, it's just because they want to make it an even playing field. If you get relegated, why should you have £80 million a year spread because over the got, next five years? Why, why should you've you? have got players on Premier League contracts. That's your own fault. Money. 
that's your own fault. You've got to put. Then, then Where does that come in from, though? They can't oh, just bring it in. No, back. no, it's no, it's been it's been in place for about three years. I think it comes in tonight. Uh, sorry, this season. So if so, the, the three. If so we what go down, we're is done. If, if we don't we, get the eighty million, there's no over. parachute. So no. they've basically got to do a fire sale. But and and, and you know what? If you're see, here's here's my wow. thing with this. Here's my thing with this, okay? Mm. Um, he says isn't in a later comment. I just want to put that in there. He says he isn't going to save the club. Um, I just want to put this there. Jimmy Bullard um, would mm. be a prime example. Jimmy Bullard, uh, Hull got relegated. I believe Jimmy was on 75 grand a week. They asked him to take a pay cut. He refused. That's Which he's his entitled to do. That's his prerogative and he's more than, you know, that's that's his choice. It very nearly bankrupt Hull City because mm-hmm. he didn't take the money, but or he didn't take the pay cut. Sorry, but if clubs are so far full of themselves, like we are, that have not put a clause in a contract that says if we go down, you must take a pay cut now. From what I understand, the pay cut that was offered to Jimmy Bullard was take a pay cut of X amount over the course of the season. If we go back up, you get it paid in a lump sum. Hmm. If we don't go up, you don't get your money. There needs to be, unless clubs are full of themselves, and, and by that you, you, could, you could allow the top 10 to, to not worry about putting these clauses in contracts, we can't afford not to. We could have done last year. This year, we can't afford not to. These contracts need these these clauses need to be in the contracts of your knee. If we go down, you you agree to a pay cut because now that these um, now that this parachute payment is stopping, um, you have to you have to be wary of that. Yeah. You have to be wary about the fact that if you go down, you are going to have big money players on, 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 or big name players on big money. Um, and, um, you, you, you could end up severely fucking yourself for it. Mm. And we could be in that role right now. Right. Well, let's, uh, let's get back on to, <laughs> on the track. I, I'm going to have to ask you to do this. And, and ladies and gentlemen, I really want your involvement, but before we get into that, we are currently on 14 likes and we've got 26 people watching. So could you guys please do us a favor and just give us a like on, on YouTube. If you're not watching us on YouTube, if you could just sort of dip out, go into YouTube, click the thumbs up and then come back, do what you want to do. It really does help the channel out with the old algorithms and gets us out to, to pay people that we haven't already maybe sort of become aware to. That would be fantastic fantastic and very much appreciated so let's get on this could be interesting and we want your participation as well guys and girls in the live chat player ratings right okay so oh hang on no wrong button (laughs) okay lucas fabianski talk to me dirge rob Absolutely. Well, let me rephrase that. He yeah he made one really good save, if I remember rightly. Really good save. That was it. Palm the, the ball back. The, uh, oh, was it shit. The first half, second half. Uh, no, it. second half. I believe it was. Um, pushed it wide. I think. I can't remember, Rob. It's it. It all blurred, blurred and dirged and bollocks. Hit, hit the wall, it came back. Bang, and he had to get down to his left, didn't he? Yeah. Now, that being said, I mean, let's not take nothing away from it. There's a 37-year-old goalkeeper. Mm-hmm. These things happen. There's only certain goalkeepers that seem like they could go on forever. Uh, Buffon was one, you know. He's still playing. Yeah, I know. Unfortunately, time comes It comes to an end for all of us, In mm-hmm. you know. So, oh, he... He was at fault for the goal, in my opinion. I'm sorry, I might be wrong in 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 people's uh, in people's eyes on that one, but I think he's at fault for the goal. And uh, I'm going to give him a five, Rob. It would have been a four, but he redeemed himself with the um, with a save from the free kick. 
Mm, yeah, I, th- I think I was on um, just before we went live. I I jumped onto West Ham Network in the live chat. I think I gave him a four. Uh, and, and rightly so. I'm going to stick by that. I think. I think. Yeah, he, he he made. Yeah, he made one good save, but you know, other than that, I just thought again his distribution of the ball. It's yeah, all got in the down. second half, and he was he, the crowd were roaring at him. You know, to sort of get get it going, and he. He sort of like he was like oh okay then sort of thing and it's like fucking hell you're 37 years of age you know we're two nil down at home we shouldn't have to be fucking coaching you from the sidelines mate you should know he, he I think he was he was very very poor and he's he was poor the last game and I personally don't think that when you've got a goalkeeper that has got a World Cup winners medal on the bench. I don't think that a, a guy who has played for PSG who has played for Real Madrid on the bench, kicking his heels, and you've had a, the incumbent who's played two poor games, really, by and large. I don't think he can. I don't think he can start against Leeds. I'm sorry, with all due respect. I think that the time has come now for a change between the sticks, and I think that Lucas Fabianski. Listen, he's been a tremendous servant to West Ham United over the years. But exactly what you said, there comes a point in everyone's career where there is a passing of the torch. And I do wonder whether we have now hit that particular time as far as Lucas Fabianski's career is concerned. And I would say that the game against Leeds, if he is between the sticks, then I really don't know what David Moyes' thought process is. I, I, I really would question it. So I'm I'm going to give... I, I'm saying I'm pretty sure I gave him a four. And I think I'm going to stick with that. Steve has given him a five. Kent's given him four. He says uh, Raya is a proper modern goalkeeper. Yeah, he, he was quite impressive. He was, I've got to say. He didn't have much to do, but he was in terms of sort of like actual making proper saves. As I say, the, the only one I can remember really was in the second half, the tip over from the header from, I think it was Dawson from a corner. Uh, uh, but yeah, he he's someone, I mean, it was quite noticeable that, you know, he he sort of, he pushes up quite high and he, he he's essentially a sweeper. Fabianski's rooted to his fucking line when we're on the halfway line. I think someone yeah. mentioned that earlier. Um, Happy says six, better than the Arsenal game. Well, that's not setting the bar very high, is it? Let's be honest. Neil says uh, he's a five. Uh, Happy goes on to say the booze he got while distributing at Stale's place were very loud. It was frustration, mate, at, because it was it happened again and again and again. And you know, you're two nil down at home. It's like, just get a fucking move on. Um, uh, just, can I just jump in? Go back to Happy's comment there. She needs a new profile picture. She still looks about twelve in that picture. <laughs> There's a few more lines on her face nowadays, babe. Come on, stop, oh, stop, yeah. stop catfishing. Come on. That's 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 you getting a few rude messages. Um, <laughs> Hugh Pat says it was a four. Dave says he was poor and he gave him a four. Uh, and Marky Boy says yet another player he won't drop. Fabianski was awful at Arsenal. Ariola should be one number one. Yeah, don't disagree, Marky. Um, have you given have you given him a mark? I don't think uh you have. So if you yeah. want to get a mark in for oh, Fabianski, oh, okay. um please do. Uh he won't get dropped. Moyes doesn't hardly drop outfield players, so I can't see goalkeepers getting changed. It's the most important position on the pitch, though, happy. If your goalkeeper's shipping goals that they shouldn't, it it, it breeds an apprehension in, in the players that are in front because you're sitting there going Shit, he's he's fucking well dodgy, mate. I'm not too sure. You know, I don't want to play the ball back to him in case he fucks things up. So then, then you're second guessing what you're going to do. But you then you know your position safe. Hmm? But then you know your position safe because he ain't going nowhere. Who? Fab. Fab. Yeah, you know you can have a shit game because he ain't going nowhere. So I ain't going to drop you either. Mm, well, Marky's come back. He's given him a four. So right, okay. Let's let's move on, ladies and gentlemen. So the next player we're going to give a rating to is Mr. Aaron Cresswell, who was playing as a left centre back in a back three centre back formation, but it was really a back five. Let's be completely honest um, with you. Hey, Budgie, um, talk to me, Duke. What did you rate him? Listen, <laughs> he's become a liability, Rob. Yes. We, we saw that twice last season. And part of me is kind of gratefully does move out of the way for the goal because mm-hmm. if he does haul him down, he gets sent off. Um, if he does haul him down, 
that scoreline's completely different because we're going to get absolutely battered again. If we if we go down to 10 men in the second half, they're going to sense blood and he's going to go. So part of me is grateful that he just moved to one side, otherwise he would have walked. He's too slow. His legs have gone. Mm. When it comes to running, his delivery of the ball is still probably, for me, probably one of the best in the Premier League for his position. His delivery is outstanding. But mm. he's being targeted now, Rob, by by opposition because he can get forward. He ain't getting back. Sue Fowl is the same again, gets forward, can't get back. It's been found out. He's being zeroed in on. He's being targeted. I'm. I'm going to give him. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go. Yeah, three. That was exactly what I gave him on uh, West Ham Networks player ratings. I gave him a three. And again, I. It, it's like Fab. It's like look, he's been an amazing servant for West Ham United. I mean, he's homing in on ten years at the club. He's seven been million, really? Excuse me. Is it seven million? I'm not even sure he cost that much, to be honest with you. I'm not even sure he, he cost us as much as that. But whatever we we bought him for, we got him from a championship Ipswich. And we got him in, what was it, 2014? Yeah, 2014. And just looking here, I, I can't remember how much we paid. Five-year contract. No, 3.75 million plus add-on. Jesus add Christ. Year. Which is, you know, you know, of its time for a left back from the championship. Listen, I can't speak highly enough of Aaron Cresswell over his career, but we got to sort of put sentiment to one side and home in on the here and the now. Right now, not good enough. Not good enough. Oh, and an opposition opposition wingers know, and opposition managers know that one area that he is very lacking in is pace. His pace has gone. And if you get someone against him that's got a little bit of a turn of foot, like Josh De Silva yesterday, it was like it was like he had lead boots on. He was going backwards. And again, I don't want to remember Aaron Cresswell was a player that's getting pissed on by players that, that in his prime he'd have taken care of quite easily. But yeah, he's, he's just it's, it's going downhill. And we've known for a long time we need surgery at fullback, left and right. And what did he do? He brought in Emerson, who I said at the time was just a slightly less shit version of Arthur Masuaku. Uh, yeah. and, so it's, and so it's proved. He was what? Chelsea's fourth choice left back, I think, when he left? I mean, that tells you what you need to know. And we bought him? Fuck me. Seriously. And then we're letting... Aaron uh, Harrison Ashby go on the other side. You know, we're waving him a cheery goodbye. I mean, do me a favour. But anyway, I'm having a little rant about fullback. No, right. I, I gave him a three. Steve's given him a one. Kent's given him a three. Mercedes has given him a four. Marky Boy, three. Happy, five. Neil, five. Actually, Kent has re-evaluated and he's come back. He said two. He's be, always being targeted and he's running in quicksand. Pat, Hugh Pat's given him a four. Um, Kent's confirmed it was three three point five four million. Um, hang on, I'll, I'll, you, no, you've started that. You'll come back to that. Yeah, uh, yeah, Marky boy, exactly. He has been great for us, but we can't keep being sentimental. Exactly my my thoughts on it. You know, in terms of his his tenure, by and large, fantastic player, fantastic value for money, great servant, and I would love to to keep him in some sort of coaching capacity when his coach when his playing career is done which may 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 not be that far away no, it's certainly not as far as a premier league players can Ah, bollocks you know have scored yeah well, you know listen we should cheer that that's what yeah, we want that's what we want yay this is what we've been reduced to cheering for manchester united uh, Steve says, what you wouldn't give for Prime Jenkinson and Cresswell at fullback? Yeah, when they, I think that was the, the Cresswell's first season when we had Jenkinson as well. Because we had we had Jenkinson for the second season, um, which was the last season at the Bowlin. He wasn't that good that season. But the first season we had Cre Jenkinson on loan and Cresswell's first season, they were mustard. But that's a long, long time ago, Steve. A long, long time ago. Anyway, right. So let's move on a pace then, shall we, Duke? The next... Next sacrificial lamb 
is Vladimir Kufal playing as a right wing back, which you could argue is not his position. But at the end of the day, you've got a job to do. You go out there and do it to the best of your ability. How did you assess his performance? Fantastic first season. Got. No problem, Steve. I mean, listen, he, he's, again, he's another one that's been found out, Rob. He, you know, he'll try. He's a trier. Yep. Yep. See you later on, Haps. He's a trier and he'll give Happy everything he can to try and. Well, it, it spilled blood for the club. Both him and his, and his checkmate both have done. Mm. But unfortunately, he's not good enough for where we want to be now. Yep. Yesterday was so high up the pitch with a crossing ability of a shark. Um, <laughs> you know, the ones with no legs. In fact, I reckon a shark could actually put in a better cross of its tail. Saying, I was going to say, I reckon if you got a shark, put a ball in front and went, Whack! I'll I, I tell you what, I reckon it'd get a fair distance on it. Yeah, but it'd probably get it in the box better. I mean, listen, he tried. He's a trier. Um, what else can you say? I'm going to give him a five. Mm. His delivery was piss poor. He gets caught out of position far too often. Um, what more is there to say? Yeah, I think I gave him a four from memory. Um I, I, I th did I say I gave Chris? I, I think I did. Chris, well, I gave a three mm -hmm. um, as far as Kufau is concerned. I think he was better. He certainly didn't get showed up the way that, that Cresswell did for their second goal. That was that was poor. Uh, I think that, that Kufau, he's not a right wing back. He was playing in, in a position that probably isn't suited to him. But at the end of the day, he's got a job to do. I thought he, he got forward, or at least he tried to. He was putting crosses into the box. Whether they had the accuracy on them was another matter, but he was at least having a go. Uh, it, it really is something that he was... He's one of the younger players that we played uh, in our back line. You know what I mean? I think he's 30, isn't he? He is. Um, yeah, bloody hell. And he's, he's one of the youngsters. Listen, again... Five million pound fullback first first half of uh, he because he came sort of like part way through his January, season didn't he yeah and then sort of like he had another the, the season we finished sixth and then the season we finished seventh you know very good value for money but again just a player that I think that now we're probably seeing why he was a five million pound fullback and I think yesterday I think I gave him a, a five yeah you know he was okay. Nothing earth shattering, but yeah, I, I think again, fullback. We 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 know we've needed surgery for some time, and for whatever reason, oh, you will go out and get Emerson. Uh, <laughs> that's the solution. Yeah, it tells you what you need to know. But just looking here, we got some guys that are coming in with their scores. Steve says he's a six. Marky Boy says he's a two. Steve gave him a six because he tried. He says Kufal five. Kent says uh, four can't cross for Toffee, can't get back. He's uh, not not got in the locker, but he's a trier. Uh, Steve goes on to say Dracula is more comfortable with crosses than our team. Uh, Stephen, you are a gentleman. Thank you very much indeed. It is much appreciated. Um, Mikey Boy comes back and says at one point Kufal chased a Brentford player for sixty yards before fouling him near our box. Could have and should have committed a tactical foul fifty yards early. Yeah, I mean I can't. Knock him for effort, you know. If he, you know, he's um, stayed with him for about sixty yards. But as you quite rightly say, if you know you're going to foul him, because if that's the way you're going to stop him, then then do it further away from our box. Thanks very much. I mean, that, that's something that Man City are, are absolute masters of. T teams like that, they will commit those tactical fouls, you know, up the other end of the pitch, and, and they won't do it so much outside the box. Uh, but there you go. Pat's come in with a four. He, he's given Kufal a four. So, right. Next one on the agenda. Gianluca Scamaca, who, as, as the lone striker, I do think it's kind of difficult to, to sort of give him a rating that... Because he's de he's dependent on his on the service that he gets, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? That's, that's the problem with a striker, is you are heavily reliant upon the service that you get. And I think that yesterday it was quite lacking. 
But be that as it may, you've got to give him a mark, old son. I'm going to give him a six. Really? Uh, and the reason I'm going to give him a six, Rob, is we, we, we spoke about it earlier. He had every intention of, of, of scoring a goal in, you know, when he went out there yesterday. Every intention. You could see it in the runs he was making. He was trying to make it easier for the, um, for the wingers to get the crosses in. Um, by making the runs. These are good runs, Rob. These are good runs that strikers, it's, it's bread and butter of strikers, season mm -hmm. in, season out. These sort of runs, wait for the balls into the box, get your goal. Bread and butter. If the ball comes in, I, I reckon if the ball comes in earlier, and there was three three occasions when he made the run just on the one move, mm. when Declan Rice hit the post, I reckon if we put the ball in, he has an attempt on goal. He runs, but uh, we saw it against. Did we play Mittyland? Was it? It wasn't Mittyland, was it? It was the Danish side we played. Oh, Viborg. Viborg, or was the other one? Silke, but no, it was Viborg. Sil yeah, Silkeborg was in the group stage. He, yeah, Viborg. He, he drops his shoulder. It looks like he's going to go back post, and then runs front post, and he scored. Mm. I think he scored against Viborg. Take it, Steve. I think it was a. I think it was a, a, a flicked volley. He did. He played the away leg. He scored back across the keeper. Yeah. Uh, two 0 Rashford again. Um, Good. He With regret. <laughs> he has every intention of scoring goals when he plays. Every intention. We don't give him. The, we don't. We don't create the chances for him. Mm. Um, Ken says there he's killing Skamaka in the same way that he killed Haller with inverted wingers. Ken, you're so spot on. If, if Ben Brahma plays on the right and Bowen plays on the left and they get past the players and whip across in, he's there, he's going to score goals. You can't keep relying. I'll tell you what, it's just one thing that's killing us as well, Ken, is he's playing inverted wingers, so we're relying on the only the only crosses that we're going to get are the overlaps from our, our, our full-backs. Hmm. Problem is doing the overlaps from the full-backs is... Cresswell then can't get back. Soufal, A, can't yeah, cross, and B, can't get back as well. So, you kind of up shit creek without a paddle. Unless you know what? I don't fight. understand why why they don't, what David Moyes doesn't do in this situation. I used to do it when I used to do um, football coaching back in the day. And I'd I'd switch the wingers. I'd, I'd switch the wingers in game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd, yeah. Change, okay. I'd change the problems for the opposition fullback. One minute you've got someone that's sort of like cutting in, and then the next minute I've I've switched them round, and now they're going round the outside. So constantly the fullbacks would have different problems to negotiate. Yep, it'd mix it up a little bit, and I I don't understand why David Moyes doesn't turn around to Bowen and and Ben Rama during the game and say, right, okay, we've been playing twenty minutes with you on these wings. I want you to switch switch around now and, and sort of like stay there for a little Mate, bit. Every see, every 10, 15 minutes. Every Absolutely. 10, 15 minutes. It's not rocket science, so, is it? So it happens six times a game that they're yeah. on opposite sides of the pitches. You know, I just science. don't... Oh, if you see it, why can't he? I, I don't know. I, I say, it, it's not just David Moyes. There's a lot of times that I'm sitting there and I'm watching a team who are getting no traction in a game and I'm looking at the wide players the forward wide players, this is not the, the fullbacks bombing on. And I think, well, why don't you just change them around and sort of like see whether having the players attacking the fullbacks from a different angle and giving them different problems to deal with, maybe that might all of a sudden change things in your favour. Give it a go. Try it for 10, 15 minutes. If, it, if, if it's sort of worse than what you did before, no harm done. You can switch them back. It's not a problem. But instead, we just keep it with the status quo. It just baffles me why that happens let's have a look at the um at the scores that i think pat gave that for i think that was for um uh Kufau, i think uh steve yeah five no damn service i can't criticize him marky boy's gone with a six uh yeah so hugh pat yes a six was for uh skamaka so no service and we've already sort of like gone into kent's one he's given him a six Neil's giving him a six. TDT, uh, Skamaka looked like he was about to cry during that game. He wasn't the only one. 
I, I felt like I was going to cry. Mm-hmm. True Cockney, he says, I feel for Skamaka, yet another one always is ruined. Doesn't get a service he'll need uh, that he needs uh, to give him. He's giving him a five. Marky boy, we don't put crosses in anymore. Yeah, I know. We pass the ball to death. Or if we do put a cross in, it's like we'll we'll go down the wing, but because they're sort of like on the wrong side sort of thing, Ben Rama's right-footed on the left, Ben R- Bowen's left-footed on the right, they've sort of like they've got to check back. Do you know what I mean? And that sort of extra second or two sometimes is the difference, in my opinion. Um, we pass the ball to death. We have a stri- striker who would love crosses in the box and we mess about going backwards, yet Skamaka is accused of sulking. Uh, Simons, if uh, Skamaka, if he didn't have the integrity, would be sat on the bench for P- PSG at the moment. Uh, VAR just got involved, and Rashford's goal's been rubbed out. Yeah, it was. It was um, basically he got behind his he got behind his defender, tried to lift mm. it over the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper's got hand to it, and as he's jumped the keeper, the ball's come back off of the keeper's hand, hit him. His arm, don't get me wrong, his arms are down. But the ball's hit his arm in it is in this in the silhouette of his body. Yeah. They're, they're kind of here. And it okay. hits him on the arm and, and bounces into the goal. Uh, if his arm's not there, it still goes into the goal because it bounces off his stomach. So I'm kind of I'm wondering why it was disallowed because it, it, his arm has gained him no advantage. I yeah. think that's the key there. Fair. Okay. Um I gave him I gave him a three. Which, on reflection, I now wonder whether I might have been harsh. And it wasn't a three on the basis of a lack of effort. It was a three on the basis of just the guy didn't get any fucking service. The guy could just... And as the game went on, I just saw, I I believe, that he just got more and more frustrated. And again, I don't blame him for that. Because I think if I'd have been ploughing a low fur- lone furrow for the majority of the match. He obviously got a little bit of support, if that's what you call it, when Antonio came on. Because we did, it seemed to me, revert to a 4-4-2 in the latter stages of the game. But he just he just looked so isolated. Oh, the... Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll probably upgrade it. As I say, I gave him a 3 on the West Ham network. I'm probably going to upgrade it, but it's not going to be a massive upgrade. I'm probably going to give him a four. But as I say, it, it wasn't because of, of him just being shit. It was because he just didn't get any service in, in point of fact. But there you go. Uh, that's just my opinion. Anyway, next one, you've got to run, run the rule over. Playing in a position that everybody has been clamouring for pretty much playing in a central midfield role alongside Declan Rice, Lucas Paqueta. (laughs) We want him... Okay. Caveat time. Yep. We want him in a central midfield. That's where we want him. But then you ask him, and I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly use um, my brother's uh, tweet for this actually, if you don't mind, while I quickly Please run. Please do. So we've been clamouring for so long for him to be in a in a central midfield position. Mm. Yep, yeah, it's all well and good. It's all well and good, Rob. Right. But what happened was we asked Paqueta to be the holder or mm. the shield. Like played how Declan Rice wants to play. We asked we asked our Brazilian number 10 to play in the role that Declan Rice should be playing in. Mm. And we allowed Declan Rice to play the role that Lucas Paqueta should be playing. The box to box midfielder. If, if you, if you, no, no, he wasn't the box to box midfielder. He was no, the no, holder. no. He was, oh, Declan Rice was. Yeah, he for me, Paqueta as says here, leaving. We basically for the life of me, I don't understand why Declan Rice is encouraged to join the attack instead of sitting out and helping control the game in and out of possession, which is exactly what he's going to be told to do when he moves to a top club. Right. Hmm. He then says, "What happens is." He, 
Rice uh, were already outnumbered in midfield. Rice was encouraged to join the attack centrally, leaving Paqueta. The more attacking of the two players left to hold and already being three versus two. Brentford would have two players high, uh, leaving Paqueta with a two-on-one in transition. And for the life of me, I don't know why we're encouraging Rice to go forward when he should be, um, when it, when he should be, which is what he'll be told to do at a top club is to sit and hold. What he did was leave Paqueta as the protector or the holder, and it just spells danger straight away in my eyes. What's worrying thing tonight is that we couldn't see what was going wrong from the bench, and there seems to be their real lack of adaptability in certain situations. So there's my caveat, is that Paqueta was asked to do a job that quite clearly isn't his job. He's never been asked to be a protector or a holder Take a or a um, enforcer in his career, right? Yeah, once again, David Moyes has brought in a player who is a creative. And listen, I've got a, I've got a friend called Neil, a uh, goalkeeper, one to one goalkeeper, Neil Manny. Yep. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna quote a text message from him last night. He's fucking shit. They really didn't mix his words. <laughs> didn't mix his words, right? He said, Did you see it? Um, he says you can see if players have got it, and Paqueta clearly doesn't have it. Hmm. His passing yesterday was fucking awful. Yes, there was a reason his passing was fucking awful because he was can constantly I, being can put I ask under a pressure. Question? Yeah. When you say his passing was awful, and I, I, it, who else made it? it said uh, disabled team said the same thing. When you say his passing was awful, what do you think his pass completion stats were? Uh, you're going to embarrass me now, and I know you are. I'm going to say it was fairly decent. Well, would you say if I said to you he had a pass completion pass success what? percentage? Do you say? Yeah, I know. Uh, of 83%, would you say that was appalling? No, but the ones that he didn't complete went out of play. It the was, one, it, I, I, I'll agree. I think that the, the, the key passes, the killer passes that he, were the ones that he missed, Rob, if that makes sense. Rob, he should be, he should be in here above hmm. probably Trent on yeah. the way we're looking at it. Probably, Probably a lot of that 83 was backwards or sideways. He should be. See where the line is between you and me, that little mm. claret line underneath that separates our two screens. On the, yep. He should be above Trent Alexander-Arnold, roughly level with our line, level with Cancelo, Joe Cancelo on the other side. He should be level with him with mm. chances. That's, that's where he should be. That's the sort of place he should be playing. He shouldn't be playing as a holder. He shouldn't be playing as the protector or the enforcer in a side that already has a ready-made player that does that job. And there's the issue. That being said, I am only going to give him, I am only going to give him a four out of 10 because I don't think he was good enough. Now, is that harsh? Is that out of order on my part? No, I don't think it is. Because again, I don't think he was good enough. Um, but he was also playing in a position where we, we shouldn't be asking him. That should be Declan Rice's role. And Declan Rice, because he's got, you know, he's got desires above his station. Um, as, as, as said earlier in my brother's tweet, he goes elsewhere. He's going to be told he's got to sit. He's got to hold. You ain't fucking going nowhere. He comes to a manager that's stronger. He's going to be told no. Um, we're not doing that, um, which for me was detriment last night to uh, Lucas Paqueta. So, but Paqueta, get, I'm going to give him a four, actually. I'm going to go four. I cannot believe we've been reduced to cheering the fact that Wolves have lost yeah. against Manchester United. Stupid, isn't it? Jesus Christ. This, this, we, we started this season with aspirations of, you know, well, maybe not Champions League football, but certainly Europa League and sort of, oh my God, how how bad is this? Anyway, so Paqueta, interesting. Marky Boy's giving him a 6.5. I'm not too sure. Um, can we allow 0.5s? Yeah, go on. <laughs> go on then, Mark. We'll, we'll, we'll let you have it, Marky Boy. 
True Cockney says he's a total waste of money and he's giving him a five. Uh, bu -bu 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 what we got else here? Dave has given him a three. Couldn't make a forward pass. Yeah, I mean, like I say, he, he completed 83% of his passes, but I think that probably the 17% that he didn't complete were probably all the forward passes. The 83 he made were probably sideways and backwards. It'd be, I'd be very interested to get oh, a breakdown Ken. of that. Ken, uh, that is on the seven. money. That's, I'll tell you what, the whole thing he's just described there, after he gives a seven, everything he describes there is absolutely on the money. And we know yeah. Kent knows his stuff. And I'll tell you what, he's nailed that there for me. Absolutely nailed it. Yeah. I think, I think you've been overly generous as for your mark, but I, I don't disagree with your assessment. Um, but I'm not too sure I agree that he's a seven. Um, Neil says he was a six. Uh, who else? Anyone else? No. Okay, that's all the marks done for Lucas Paqueta. Neil's next comment is on the money as well. Uh, this one. Yeah, Rice has got delusions of grandeur. He's over. He's he's um he's he's. I don't know if they're delusions got, of grandeur. Because we've turned around and said that that we believe that he is an a, an elite level player. He the is, only thing is, is that he's right not now. operating in the here and the now. He's sort of he's thinking about. Yeah, um, and there's his problem. You know where where he's going to go next. Craig Dawson, twelve. He was our best attacking threat on the pitch, and that's a fucking worry. Um, no, in all seriousness, um, I'm going to give him a six um, again. There was a point really fucking annoyed me. The ball to the first half, pass the ball to Soufal, and then he was playing the right wing back role. He was like leaving as as Soufal crossed it. I think Dawson was on the corner flag, and I'm thinking you've gone the wrong way. Run towards the box. Get in the fucking box for the cross. Don't play the one-two down the wing to put the cross in, you big bastard. I've seen you on FM. You score goals. Get in the box. No, I, 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 six. Hmm. Yeah, I, I I gave him a six as well. I I think he, he was our best player. Yeah, he um, was. Man of the match I think if, I, yeah. if, I'm, if I'm naming a man of the match who got a six... That tells you your problem. Yeah, and your, your man of the match was a 32-year-old journeyman centre-back who actually doesn't want to be at the club. For family reasons, admittedly. But he doesn't want to be at the club. I I, I think that says it all. Yeah. Fucking hell. Serious. What a state we're in. Um, Neil's given him a seven. And he says he was man of the match. Dave's given him a seven. Solid. Yeah. I mean, it, it was a close one. I was like six, seven. It's somewhere in that sort of realm i think it's difficult for me to sort of give a defense anyone sort of like a high praise when we conceded two horrific goals he wasn't in my opinion a, a part of why we conceded them generally and, and like you say he was he was probably our most offensive most most potent weapon going forwards without a that doubt is, that is awful you know considering we've got a 35 million pound striker up there yep you know, what's that all about? But yeah, no, I, I gave him a six and gave him my man of the match award. So then we move on. On the right wing, playing his trade was Jared Bowen. Bowen's on fire, goes the song. Well, I'm not entirely convinced he was last night. But what say you? Four. Can't even, I, and I'll tell you what, I ain't even going to give it the time of day to, to even explain because I don't even know what he did yesterday. Rightly or wrongly, um, did we should it have been a penalty? A should it was whatever. Yeah, he did run around a bit, got a couple of fouls. That was about it. it was absolutely nothing else from him. Yeah, yeah. I I do worry that that he had his head turned in the summer, and that the that the Bowen that we had up to that point. I don't know whether we're going to get him back. No, I hope I don't I'm think wrong. We will. Yeah, I hope I'm wrong because the player that we had last season, season before, a player that was getting spoken about as, could this guy go to Liverpool? And I think he's heard that chatter. There's no way that he, has, he hasn't been aware of that talk. And I honestly do wonder whether his head got turned at that point and that he's, he's sort of like he's thought that he's made it before he actually has. Before he's, he's got, got an there, England yeah. cap. Yeah, he, he got called up for the England squad. He's got an England cap. So he's going around. I'm an England international. I'm I'm being spoken about as that you know Liverpool want me and all that. 
But are you though? And there's the question. Well, that's it. You know, sort of like players that have, that are really that that are sort of like have spoken about like that need to produce it consistently and not just sort of like fizzle out. And and exactly what Marky Boy said there when he's given his rating of four, fire extinguished. Yeah, he's he's not. You know, that is it. He's he's embers. Sort of like slightly glowing embers. That's all we've got left of Jared Bowen at the minute. And he needs to turn it round because I tell you what, I'm not entirely convinced that he should start the next game. But the he's problem is, player, is you then up you then ask the question, well, who would replace him? And that's the problem. He's not the player he thinks he is. No. No, I think I gave him a five, but again, maybe I was being overly generous. As I say, I did think he he put himself about a bit, just lacked in quality and cutting edge in the final third. But is that enough? No. To put himself of about it a bit? It's not, is it? No, no. Just sort of running around like a headless chicken is never enough. You have to align that with some sort of quality and yeah. technical nails. Do you know what I mean? Or tactical nails. Uh, didn't didn't do it. So may, maybe my five was overly generous. And I, might, I might sort of it lean towards a four, which Neil from Down Under agrees with Marky Boy and says that he's a four. Same score from Axel. Kent Hammers comes in for no threat, killed by playing as an inter inverted winger. Uh, plays predictable now. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. And and whilst you know that's the position he's always played. Like I say, I just think okay. Well, look, he's got to a point now, and the team has got to a point where, like you say, it's it's all been figured out. The players know right. He's going to cut in on his left, so don't don't fucking let him. And then he's got a problem because then he's got to try and sort of like, oh, shit, I've got to play it on my right. It's like, like I say, I don't understand why with Benny and Bowen, every so often, every 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever, you, David Moyes says, right, you two swap over and, and let's see what we can, you know, do we get more sort of joy going going that way, whatever. Um, Dave says he's a four. Goes missing. Yeah, can't disagree oh, with that. Massively so. Yeah, definitely. Can't disagree with that. Uh, Neil from down now. And, uh, Bowen is like Moyes. Only knows one way to play. And every other player knows that and blocks him accordingly. Yep. And Marky Boy goes on to say he was picked for England whilst playing for little old West Ham. Rice and Bowen need to remember that. Yeah. Yeah. But Agreed. All gone to their head, mate. Anyway, so that's Mr. Bowen marked up. We've probably upset Danny Dyer, but fuck it. He's he's bobbing around somewhere in the English Channel. Oh, the other Danny Dyer. Oh yeah, whatever. <laughs> Not bothered. Um, talk to me about Angelo Ogbonna. Yeah, uh, he's uh, listen. He, he he did well enough to come back and, and prove a point, Rob. Okay. Um, I'm not talking about last season after the injury. I'm talking about the oh this season. Sorry, after the injury, but I'm talking about last season when he when he came. He, or the season before, he was our best player. People yeah. saying his legs had gone. People saying it was over for him. People saying that, you know, that enough's enough of Bonner. Well, guess what? That's not the case. He came back. He proved the point. He proved the point, and he played some really good football. He got back into the. Uh, he got back into the side. He became an essential cog in in the wheel that got us to that semi. Semi final, well, or the season before got us to qualify for it. Yeah, yeah. He scored against you know, people saying, Oh, he's done, he's done, he's done. He'd become that quintessential cog. No, now he's done. Now, now it's over for him. As sorry to say that because I actually like him as a as a player, I, mm -hmm. I actually rated him quite highly. I, I think he's a, a great servant, a great again, yes, yeah. Um. But now he's done, you know, 30, 34. You can't keep relying on that, Rob. I'm sorry, it's not how it works. We've got to we've got to be better now going forward. We have to we have to find these players from somewhere else. We've got to I know we've got Zuma. I know we've got Agard. Nathan. Agard, yeah. But if we <laughs> Them. And, and my, my mate pointed out, Neil pointed out, Aguirre has played more games for Morocco than he has West Ham since he signed. Mm -hmm. That's all I've got yep. for you. Yeah. 
just before I I'll tell, I, I gave my mark. I think I gave him a five. Um, I'll get into the marking in a minute. Just just want to explore this one. James popped up with. Um, has anyone noticed that there could be a forward pass and it goes back to Rice time and time again? By that time, the opposition team have all got back behind the ball. It's not just that. It's it's everything, James. Everything everything is. There's just sort of like a little bit of a hesitation. There's a little bit of a, like I say, when the wingers have got it, when Benny and Bowen have got it, there's always that. If they're going to play a cross into the box, they see Skamaka making the run or Antonio or whatever, because they're on essentially the wrong side for, for yeah, crossing the ball. The they've got to check. Do you know what I mean? And even that sort of like second or two of checking sometimes can give the opposition that extra second or two to just get into a better position as far as their defensive responsibility is concerned, we're slow in all aspects, mate. All aspects. But you're right. I'm not not disagreeing with you. That is a pattern of our play. But it's it's the it's the whole thing. It's not just that. We're just very, 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 very slow. Yeah. But so yeah. So I gave um, Ogbonna. I'm sure I gave him a five. That's what I'm going to stick. I'll to give him a five. Yeah. Benny. No end product again yesterday. Mm-hmm. Dithered, dallied, dallied. Oh, well. Um. Oh, sorry. Before, before you. Sorry, there were. Sorry. Right. Uh, Neil gave Ogbonna a six. Marky boy gave him a six. Um, Chris is asking how it's not been sacked. We've asked that one, mate, and we've got no answers for you, well, mate. We're be honest with you. You said there, mate. If you keep underperforming, you get a P forty five. Rob's very close as well. That's not nice. Sorry, I love you. Mm. Um, I don't get paid for this shit, so... That's true. Fair enough. Anyway, uh, Kent Hammer says, Oggy's five. I thought he did well. Showed he could still play. Prem, he uses his brain. First three yards in your head. He's now a backup. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Chris also says, Skamaka's work rate was appalling. Yeah, I do wonder, though, whether Chris... He was just sort of, he got to a point where he was making runs. He was putting himself into space. He wasn't getting bound. And as the time wound on, he was just getting more and more frustrated. As I quote, what's the fucking point? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marky Boy goes on, says, we have Kera, Aguirre and Zuma going forward. That should be our priority, getting them fit and playing well as a unit. I I agree with Aguirre. I agree with Zuma. Kera... Still very much. Did you see them as a back three using using wing backs going forward? If we could get decent wing backs, possibly, possibly, yeah. maybe. Dave's given Og Bonner a five. Um, as far as uh, Ben Rama's concerned, sorry, what are you what are you giving him as a mark? I know you said he was quite wasteful. Four, mate. Ken, Ken really? pretty much stole my thunder. Um, yeah. He did put the ball far too often in the opposition goalkeeper's hands. It wasn't whipped in, it was floated. And this was after, you know, um, Skamaka had given up the ghost of trying to run for a, for a cross because there was no fucking point because it was coming in too late and he was surrounded and, and harangued and harried. So in his in his look, what was the point? So, yeah, a four from Benny, absolutely no end product. We've got to a point, again, where we're having to ask questions as to, you know, his consistency. I thought he played quite well against Arsenal yesterday. He was the only one that started in the first probably 10 minutes to want to do stuff against his old team. But what did he actually do? Here we are sitting here going, well, nothing in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Yeah, I think he, I thought he, again. I thought his endeavour. I couldn't fault. There was a couple of times he, he had a couple of ball carries where he was he was running with the ball for a, a good distance. But as you say that, you know, when he he, he needed to pl- either play a pass or take a shot that made the goalkeeper produce a save. Yeah, did he? No. I think I I think I might have given him a five on West Ham Network. And that's, again, I think that's where I'm going with that because I've got to give him a little bit of credit because he, he at least had a go. But I'm going to go with a five. Um, Kent's given him a four, put it in the keeper's hands so many times. Fair. Can't argue with that, really. But Neil's said uh, four, probably played better than Moyes thought. Yeah, but then again, Moyes thinks that, that Benny's shit anyway. So probably, yeah, you know, <laughs> whatever he does isn't good enough, poor, poor sod. 
Um, Marky boy, plenty of skill. No end product gives him a five. Dave has given him a seven. He agrees, though, that there is no end product. I'd like to see him squeeze in the middle more often to back up Skamaka. Yeah, don't disagree. I think that, that Skamaka definitely needs a little bit of support and whether Benny could be the candidate for that. But is, is Moyes going to utilise him in that way? I think if that's going to happen, Dave, it means that David Moyes has to go. Maybe yeah. another manager might have the brains to do that, but I don't see that David Moyes is ever going to use Benny in that fashion. But... There you go. Right. So uh, 29 of you watching, we got 23 likes. Could you drop a like on the, the YouTube stream? That would be very kind of you, if you wouldn't mind. So we've got to Ben Rama and the next one you've got to give a rating for. The youngster of the back five at, at the age of 28, Chelsea's fourth choice left back when we bought him. Talk to me about Emerson Palmieri. Wank. <laughs> Okay. Does he deserve? Does he? Does he actually deserve? A, Don't worry. A, 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 does he deserve a um, a rating, Rob? I, 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 again, it's one of the it's one of the ones that was really, really just the reason he was Chelsea's fourth choice, fourth choice centre back. Um, going to give him a two. I'm not, two. I'm not even going to fuck around. I'm not even going to bother wasting my breath on him. <laughs> nothing else to add. No, nothing. Okay. Okay. Well, we've got Marky Boy that's jumped in. He's he's given him a three. Um, I can't remember what I gave him on West Ham Network. Probably a little bit like his performance yesterday, quite sort of underwhelming. Yes. I, I'm, I'm probably going to go... I'll give him a four. I think it's difficult for a player. I mean, when, when was the last time he, he started a game for us in the Premier League? I don't, I'm not even sure he has. I don't think it matters, wanker. No, but I'm, I've, I'm, I've got to give that as some sort of mitigation. His first game in, he's sort of gone into a high-pressure situation. I know he's an international. I'm, I'm probably trying be to... Be good enough. I'm probably trying to give the guy a little bit of slack and all the rest of it, trying to pro give him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. But, yeah, probably a four. You know, Marky Boy says he's giving him free for managing to tie his boots. Yeah. Fair enough. Polite. Um, Neil's, Neil's come in. He's, give, he's given him a two. Jesus. Um, played like a badly placed witch's hat as he was always getting in the way. I like it. I like it a lot. Got a uh, lot of time. Kent's got giving him a one. Bloody hell. I, maybe I am being generous. Um, never a left back, but I expect Moyes thought he could convert him to one. Yeah. 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 Vanity project. Uh, and we, all, we all know what happens with people with an ego, but... Anyway, right, last player, because we're not going to bother with subs. Um, this could be interesting. Declan Rice. Three. Oh. Oh, that's harsh. Harsh. And that encompasses... 96% past success it's the it, it woodwork yeah the first 20 minutes mate he could have got a 10 out of 10 he could have been man of the match he, he had one dribble he won one aerial won two tackles yeah that was the entirety of our entire our entire team's performance doesn't yeah. make it any good rob um he's not I'm a captain. Of bear with sticks he's here. not an on-field captain well, he's he a victim of his own circumstance when it comes to the whole thing with um, with Mark Noble and, yeah. and him being so fucking good that we will bend over backwards to give him whatever he wants. Um, or just bend over. It's, it's stupid. Yeah. He's not a captain. Um, would I have given it possibly to... Um, would I have given it to Dawson? Would I have given it to uh, Oggy? Well, probably looking at what, it now. What, hang on, hang on. Just back the truck up. The what, captaincy. yesterday? The yesterday. Captaincy. Yeah, just what, in general. You, you, you'd give the captaincy to someone that, that wants take. So you would take the captaincy off of a guy that's pretty much said that he wants to leave the club and give it to a guy who's pretty much said he wants to leave the club. 
that has fight, determination and will kick a Sheffield United player in the fucking head for the club. This prick has done none of that. He stands there waving his arms around, shakes his head and gets the ump. I don't want to see that. I want to see someone like a Scott Parker. I want to see someone like a Noble who's willing to pick up a Manchester United cock off the pitch and carry him away so we can try and get on with the game. This pretty boy, playboy, handsome lad, ain't doing none of that. And I'm beginning to feel how Ireland fans felt when he fucked off and came over to England. Ooh, harsh. Harsh. Let's have a little look and see if... uh... If anyone agrees with you, old chap. Well, Marky Boy's given him a four. I think, yeah, it, it wasn't a great performance from him yesterday. I'm not quite sure it was as bad as that. But he then goes on to say, never thought we'd see Rice get a three or a four out of ten. But here we are. Uh, Neil from Down Under, not a captain's asshole, but thinks the game revolves around him. Uh, gives him a five. Hammerhead. Oh, that one hurt. Three. Tell him. He's hindering us as a club. Get him out. Get him out the door. Question is, how much how much do you do? And you guys in the live chat jump in. Oh, you? you're coming in a question that I was gonna answer. I was gonna deal with a minute ago. Go on. I was just gonna say, if if we do get rid of him in the January transfer window, how much are we getting and what do we do with the money? 90 and go buy Donny van der Beek from Man United. Really? Yeah, all day long. All day long. Okay. okay. Give me Donny van der Beek. He's worth, uh, according to transfer mark, we know they they, they paid 44 for him. Transfer mark, David, this is Euros. They paid 44 for him. He's currently on transfer marks at 20. I reckon we could probably get him for about 30, 30 million quid. Still leaves us with 60 to go deal with a left and right back situation. Get me in that club now and I'll deal with the problems. You heard it here first. Duke's Duke's hawk, hawking for a job. Would you still run the Lewisham Tavern, though, old chap? Oh, I'd, I'd, I could do both. It's fine. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> Hammerhead, you're getting, you're getting a bit of support from you, Duke. Um, he says, you're, you're not harsh, you're real. I right, listen, everyone's got their own opinions. I think I gave him... Did I give him a five? Should I stick with that? I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of wavering between a five and a four for deck. I've got a question for Sharky. He says there, Donny van der Beek wouldn't come to us. What, so he's going to be happy sitting on a bench at a United side that is still struggling or he can come here and make a massive difference and play week in, week out. I think we... Uh... It'd be another Lingard situation, wouldn't it? They'd loan him to us with no option or obligation to buy. He'd have a rip-roaring time of it and then he'd end up going of Nottingham Forest about 18 months later then, then, then right now that's better than fucking Rice's but that's what I'd do I'd go after I'd, I'd go for Donny van der Beek and then I'd probably use the other 55 60 million to do with our left mm. and right back problems because we uh, he's, uh, he's, oh, he's obviously getting keen as well which could be fun um who knows what Michael Keane yeah from Everton there's rumours that that's going to happen in January. Wow. Brilliant signing that. <sighs> oh, well. Anyway, right. There's one more person you got to mark, though, old son. And you guys in the live chat. And I suspect that this could get a bit fiery. Nothing. That high? I, I, I'm actually shocked. Absolutely nothing. He doesn't even, doesn't even deserve my breath, mate. Not, doesn't even deserve fair comment, Sharky. Fair comment. Yeah, that's that's a fair point. But then um, Hammerhead comes in with his own fair point as well. So yeah, and that's he, true. And let's be honest, he didn't even play at, um, at Everton that much, did he? If I remember rightly. So no. yeah, fair enough. Um, he didn't. Yeah, he didn't exactly rip rip it up in the Premier League for Everton last season on loan. So what? But again. But again, you're not a, a Everton. Everton not playing in a hmm. in a way that can benefit him. I, I actually, I, honest to God, and now the more hmm. I think about it, the more I'm getting aroused. Is that I would aroused? Yeah, i um, I think Van der Beek would would then bring out um, would be beneficial for some of the likes of Qatar and Ben Rama. Okay, because I, I think. 
he has vision alongside those two. They can make runs. He will pick pass. Yeah. So I, I oh, oh, football manager, I'll be uh, over to you in a minute. Oh, hello. Hello. We've got 38 people watching, 28 likes. Give us a couple of likes. Let's see if we can get to 30 and above on the old likes on YouTube. Well, as far as Mr. Moyes is concerned, and if any of you guys in the live chat want to give him a mark, if you can be asked, because um, <laughs> unlike uh, Duke's, Duke's just not asked of giving his opinion too Doesn't much. Doesn't deserve one, not even a minus one. Marky Boy's given him a minus five, which is actually an awful lot better than what Kent gave him. A minus 66. <sighs> I don't know what. I, I, I don't know. On the one hand, I think that he gave the supporters what they wanted in that he dropped Thomas Socek and he's changed up the formation. He's jigged things around. So I think he has to get a little bit of credit for that. Even though it didn't work, I think that the fact that he's finally... Too little, too late, admittedly. No, Rob, he didn't change anything. He didn't no, change no, anything. No, no, what I'm saying is he changed the formation of the team. Whether he changed the pattern of the play, whether he changed the intensity, no, he didn't. There was there was no change in how we've played yesterday to how we've played basically this entire calendar year. It was slow. It was pedestrian. It was safety first football. It was, it was too timid so so you're right there was no change there he's tried to change it in terms of the personnel he's tried to change it in terms of the shape but the outcome was entirely predictable. predictably the same you know i as soon as i saw that starting 11 i went right so you've got three center backs ogbonna dawson and cresswell i've seen milk turn quicker and you're putting them up against ivan tony Josh De Silva and Brian and Wormo. Do you want to know what That's I thought about? Well. Do you want to know what, what I thought about when when I I saw that back three? Mm. You know the Australian fellow he died last year, I believe, or this year. Uh, Australian comedian. If you go onto YouTube, you can just just type in the front fell off. You'll you'll find the um you'll find the video. He talks about okay. oil tankers, Rob. And now they're built, uh, you know, strict maritime rules and everything else. That's what I thought of when I when I saw those three. I thought oil tankers have a uh, have less of a turning circle than all three of those players put together. Yeah, they are so slow. They are so. Um, they don't get me wrong. They're old school. They're blood and thunder kind of. Um, the kind of blood and thunder type of players will get stuck in. Sadly, the legs have gone and they can't get near to players to get stuck in anymore. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm probably going to give David Moyes for yesterday. And I, again, this is probably me being a little bit overly generous. I'm going to give him a two. Two out of ten. Don't even deserve that. Well, as I say, I, I'll probably, like I say, I'm probably giving him those marks solely for, at last, dropping Thomas Socek, at last trying to change formation, even though it didn't work at all. Rob. And, uh, yep. It's all well and good that he he uh, he dropped Thomas Socek. Mm -hmm. Maybe go back to what we did before. What have Thomas Suchek as the box to box and Declan Rice as the sitting? There you go. I know. You go. I know. Oh, so listen, I, I can't argue with that. But if, look, what I'm saying is, is that every, everybody, let's be completely honest, myself included, you as well, after the Arsenal game, after Thomas Suchek in 78 minutes completed yeah. eight passes and had a 42% completion success as far as passing was concerned, we all turned around and said, but he's going to play against. Brentford and he didn't so I, I gotta give him a little bit of props for that but it ain't it ain't enough but listen we all wanted it but that's listen it's not Suchek's fault and I don't I listen I, I see what Iris Tommy's saying here about the rice slander okay I, mm. I get that okay hey, I get that but it wasn't it wasn't like that before Tommy it wasn't like that before 
we've had to change things because of the way that Rice wants things changed. We're bending over backwards to try and keep a player that's already fucking gone. How do you, how do you know that Rice wants to be the box to box midfielder? How I mean, how do you know this wasn't a master plan by David Moyes? Nobody David, knows. David Moyes doesn't have master plans, Rob. We've we've clearly seen this. There there is no winning is what he does, isn't it? No, quite clearly fucking not. Yeah, no, no, Tommy, I agree with this. You know, you look at the likes of Paqueta. You look at the likes of Ben Rama. Kent said it earlier. Um, Man United. You know, what a day that was in the snow. In the Um, snow. (laughs) Fuck me, it took me forever to get there. I'll tell you what, actually, I stopped off at uh, an off-license on the way home to get a beer. He told me they were in, I paid for him and he told me they were in the snow out the front. All I had to do was go dig them out of the snow at the front of the shop. That's how it was amazing that journey. I'm, I had like literally um, Foster's slushies. It was great. Um, but, you know, we, we're saying under under these players, Ken said earlier about Ben Rama flourished because he was part of a, a fluid front three, not being held to account for one position. Um, it comes back to me saying that about Andy Carroll and what made Andy Carroll a fifty million pound striker. You know, it's all well and good buying these players off of the back of what they do, but unless you're going to let them do what they've done, which made them the players that you've bought, you're not going to get the same results. Hmm. So we 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 had the right combination of Rice and Suchek before. We've already had that. We've proved that. Yeah. Let's go back and do that. We, we don't do that anymore. Let's go back and do that and we'll see. Honestly, we'll see the results. Mm. What do you make of all these sort of noises, though? Saying, basically intimating that he's not going anywhere. That must make you feel quite deflated, same as me. Oh, listen, I, I, I've, I've not heard anything that says Declan Rice, from Declan Rice's mouth, I've not heard anything that says he wants to go. No, 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 I'm talking about Moyes. Oh, well, the fact that Moyes ain't going anywhere. Moyes is a prick. Moyes is a prick. And Moyes is just as delusional as, um, as uh, and I will say it, <clears throat> Moyes is just as delusional as some of the other th- fans out there that are still Moyes in. I don't think there's many of them left. But there are some out there, Rob. I've seen them on Twitter this morning. Really? There are some out there. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. I and bet they're, they're genuine. in the minority now. They're genuine as well. They're not mm. taking the piss. They're genuine Moyes in fans. Um, but he's delusional, Rob. Mm. He was delusional on day one, winning is what I do. Shut up, you pleb. Not once. Hey, Larry. Not once. Moyes is killing the team, right? But Moyes is also killing the team by allowing Declan Rice to do what he wants to do and not what's better for the club. I'm sorry, but what Declan Rice did before, Rob is what put Declan Rice on the radar of all these other clubs. And it's the position yeah. he still plays for England. He still right. plays as a CDM for England. He he is on the radar of the other clubs because of the position he played before. Not the position he's playing now. I'm telling you now, based off of the, back, the fact of what he's doing now, <laughs> based on the position of what he's doing now, um, he, you're not getting £90 million pound for him. Mm. Not in the slightest, based on what he does now. Goes back to doing what he done, sitting in front of the back four, breaking up play, pinging them balls left, right and centre that allowed Suchek to make late runs into the box as Jared Bowen pulls him back to the edge of the area, bang, and it goes. I'm sorry, that's where it works, yeah? That's where it works. That's where Declan Rice became the £150 million pound player. That's where Declan Rice became the best player in his position at his age in the world. I said those words. Yep. He goes back right now, right now. I, I don't I don't know. I can't even tell you what's going on. But if we go back to what we do, I'll tell you what, here we are sitting in 2022 and Neil's in the future. He is. Scary. He is. Have a new year, Neil. <laughs> Right, okay, I think we're going to end it there, aren't we, old chap? Two hours, I think it's good enough. I'd like yeah. to say before we shoot off, um, I'd probably take it upon myself to say it for Rob as well. Um, thank you for the last two years, very close to two years. Um, happy New Year to every single Indeed. one of you. 
There's 34 of you on the on the stream. Um, bloody hell, where did you lot come from? Um, 32 likes. Uh, out, guys. I'm happy with that. Um, you know, you you you've all been here with us during this journey. Hopefully, this journey does get better at some point, and we can start um, enjoying this again because this last year calendar year has been bollocks. It's not been much fun. Um, hopefully, we can have a better one. Happy New Year to you and your family, all your loved ones. Um, hopefully, we uh, 2023 brings you all that you asked for. Definitely, definitely. And and talking, uh, if I may, about bringing you all that you asked for, um, we, we must also remember those that are less fortunate. Eh, Duke? Indeed. Forge from Iron is proud to support Iron Supporting Food Banks. They are a group of West Ham United fans and friends inspired by the work of other football fan food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations from Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supply seven distribution centres in the borough, seven days a week, and hand out several hundred three-day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham community. They are supported in their efforts by West Ham United Football Club, the WHU Foundation, LS185, London Legacy Development Corporation, Newham Council, the Met Police, Spire London East Hospital, Expedient Security and a large number of West Ham and football fans. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page. You will find the link to this in the description section of the video details in this stream. Thank you for your support. Come on, you irons. So as we wave goodbye to 2022 and a hello to 2023, I think it's fair to say that the year 2022 for our beloved West Ham has been turbulent. I think Bust. that's the word I'm looking for. There's been little moments. There's been moments that I have to say were, were you know, high points little though they were obviously the game against Seville at London Stadium was absolutely cracking the game away against Leon absolutely magnificent 3-0 but that's a world away from where we find ourselves ladies and gentlemen and yes I realize that we're in the last 16 of a European competition so but let's be honest it's the third rate European competition Premier League is your bread and butter and right now I don't care what David Moyes says I, with all due respect, I don't care what Declan Rice says. With all due respect, all this about we won't get we won't, we won't get dragged down, we won't get relegated. Listen, we're, we're looking at it. We're the team at the minute in the Premier League that has lost more games than anyone else. We we've lost eleven matches in the Premier League. There's no other team in the Premier League that have lost as many games as us right now. We need to turn this around. David Moyes or whoever's in charge whoever's in charge in, in the team's selection and all the rest of it needs to find a way to claw back results. Cause I tell you what guys championship football, if we're in the championship next season, that doesn't bear thinking about, you know, a, a half full, if you're lucky London stadium players that we've got that we've bought for a lot of money, like Lucas Paquitar, 50 million quid. We're not going to get 50 million for, quid for, to sort of shunt him out the door. We're going to have to wave him on at a loss. And everybody else, we're not going to get full market value if we're a championship club. So I hope and pray that they, if David Moyes is, is still in charge for the Leeds game, I'll make no mistake. I've, I've said my piece on him. Duke said his piece on him. But I'll make no no apologies. I want him to turn it around. I want him to prove me right wrong. I want him to come back and come back fighting and be sort of like that bullish Scotsman that, that walked in and said, winning is what I do. Well, time time to start walking the walk as well as talking the talk, Mister Moyes. We need we need you. We need three points, and we need it pretty damn quickly. If you're okay. still in for the Leeds game, you've got to find a way of getting three points. I'm I'm personally, I've I, at the minute, I think he should have gone after the Leicester game. I've said that for a while. I've been consistent there, and nothing I've seen in the last two matches has changed my mind. But if he's if Gold Sullivan, Brady, and Kotrinsky think differently from me. I hope they know what they're doing because if it goes wrong, 
it's it's going to be pretty catastrophic. Anyway, love you and leave you guys. Have yourself a great New Year's evening. Come on, you irons. Stay safe. <laughs>